What is going on guys? Victor here and I'm a little bit chilly because I'm no longer in Florida. I'm in the Northeast and to continue the Northeast series, I got a beautiful Just Legal Striper, also known as a striped bass. And uh, we're gonna do a catch, clean and cook today, but I never did an intro because I wasn't sure if I was gonna have enough fishing footage. So I basically put my feelers out there on Instagram and big shout out to Kevin Conway because without him this video wouldn't be possible. He messaged me on Instagram and said, dude, you gotta get out here. There's a sick eel bite and that's what we did. So a few days ago, I went out, got the surf rod, got the van stall. Kevin picked me up and we fished the Cape Cod Canal and we got on such a sick bite. This is actually the smallest of all of the fish we caught. I got a 47 inch fish, which I'm pretty sure, or 48 inch fish, which I got on video. I'll meet you guys back at the filet table. Enjoy some of the nighttime eel fishing. There wasn't a whole lot of talking. I'll discuss kind of more of like the rigging and setup and what we did after this fishing footage. Enjoy. Check it out guys. First ever keeper striper. All thanks to Kevin. Think this is slot yeah, or bigger. keeper? Yeah. Oh, that's a perfect eating size, isn't it? Yes, sir. A circle hook right in the corner. That live eel. These fish are just so sick. Look at this, guys. All right. So I actually just caught what was it? 43, 44 inch fish. 44 inches. Yep. 44 inch fish. We didn't get on video. Um, but we got that one first. That was my very first one ever tonight. And then me and Brooke aren't gonna be here long, so I wanted to harvest a smaller fish. I think it's about 35. Yep, 35 inches. 35, Starting 36 in inch fish, probably right around 12 pounds. Perfect eating size. We don't want a huge one, but I've never done a catch and cook with a striper. It's gonna be the first one. But these things, it's just so much fun fishing for them at night with eels and they just, they just, a completely different fish. Striper number three on. Can't really gauge how big this fish is because it was way out there. I'm letting my eel sweep about, I don't know, 50 to 75 yards at times. Oh. Yeah, this whole fighting the uh, fish in between your legs, not used to it. Not a bad, oh. a little bit bigger than the last one. Yeah, I'll get down there. I'm not gonna take him out. And that tide really already dropped a lot, didn't it? Yes, sir. Probably like a 15 pound fish. Yeah, a little bit bigger than the other one. Nice, look at that. And this is why you fish a van stall, so you can put your reel in the water. Just gonna let them out of the water one time, and that's it. I'll show you guys. Look at that. That's a 40 inch fish all day. 38, 40 inch fish, eel sticking out of the mouth. So, hook right in the corner. Let him go. If you hand me that thing, I'll hold on to it. It's just so sick, cause you know, completely different than what I'm used to, look at that. Oh, we got Kevin hooked up on a big one. Right. <laughs> Look at that. The stud. Sorry I'm blinding you. How big do you think? Yeah, 20 pounds. Big? Nice one. All right. Woo! Scurried Spunky away. Spunky fish, ready to go. And you got your yield back. Yes, sir, it's nearly game. I think this is the biggest fish I've hooked up tonight. Caught that 143 inch fish. But this is the most drag out of all the fish that have pulled so far. 
That's a good That's fish. A good fish. Oh, yeah. oh boy, pull him up. Pull him up. That's a good fish. Yeah, it is. Oh, uh, you can feel the power in that head. So I'll, I'll grab him. It's a good fish, isn't it? Yes, it is. Put your rod down. Rod down? Yeah, put your rod down and grab the tip. I really see the rod. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, look at that thing. That's the biggest one of the night, isn't it? Yes, sir. Hell yeah. How big do you think this one is? We'll measure him. Woo! That is a stud. So that same eel I just caught that fish on, that like 44, 45 inch fish, casted it back out and we're on again. Feels good. Oh yeah, it's got some weight to it for sure. Are you ready for the waterworks? Lucky eel, isn't it? Sure. There we go, fish number two. This one's not as big as the first one, but it's still big. I've broken my striper PB like six times tonight, which is <laughs> awesome. All thanks to Kevin. Look at this. I got a lead. Beautiful fish. See you later, dude. Hope you guys enjoyed that striper footage. Now, before we go ahead and clean that striper up, I'm gonna take you guys to a very special place, a place that I haven't been to yet. Josh from JH has been a huge support on this channel as far as gear and stuff, so I gotta show you guys his little tackle shop. How's it going? How's it going? Good, good. How are you? This is Josh. How's man, everybody doing? The myth, the legend. Oh, please. I'll try my best. Him and his dad have been in business for a long time, right? Long time, yeah. It's pretty cool. He's been doing it for like 60 years. Which is awesome. And they're still got that little mom and pop tackle shop feel, but he has expanded way beyond the walls of here. Sure, yeah. Huge online presence. And you guys, he has some of the best real selection. Always got the latest stuff in stock. So I'm going to give you guys a little tour of the shop. We actually started out here years ago with this. There was a wall here. So it was just this front. This was like a warehouse. I would come here like early mornings and just sit here and like no customers, just like death. And you'd just be sitting and falling asleep as like 18, 19 year old kid, wherever it was. Then we moved over to this side. We actually got rid of that whole side and just had this side. This, there was a wall here. Okay. And for many years we were here. Maybe 10 years ago when we started just to grow, we took over this again. So it's not a huge space. It's, you know, we're on Long Island, it's tough with land. You know what I mean? You don't have these huge places where you can have a retail store and a, and a warehouse. Like we could have a warehouse in a industrial yeah. park somewhere without a problem, but then you wouldn't have front of the store. So we try to keep everything together. But I think as we grow over the next couple of years, we'll have to separate. We're just growing too quickly. Josh came out with a new app. He's going to tell you a little bit about it. Yes, yeah, so we've got a JNH Tackle app. It's on uh, iOS and Android. So you just download it for your smartphone and do all your shopping on there. Everything that Victor likes is going to be on there. And then also you can sign up for our email and get 10% off. I'm sure Victor will post coupon code uh, down below. All right. In the description box below, just wanted to throw that out there. I'm telling you, the 
amount of stuff he fits in here, it's like a fisherman's paradise. The plug wall, the soft plastic wall, it's just really cool to look at. And we're gonna go ahead and clean the striper up. Like I said, I didn't do a whole lot of talking or explaining because, you know, I was really focused on the fishing aspect and I just, getting video was just additional. So this is what we were doing. We fished in the Cape Cod Canal. I had a Vanstall VSX 150, 30 pound braid, and we were eel fishing and I got an 11 foot rod right here. You have the canal, which is kind of like an inlet and the water's sweeping this way. And there's this kind of like tidal area where the water swirls back around and we were casting our eels up current and letting them drift into this kind of slack area. And there must've been a giant school of stripers because we were getting hit almost every single cast. Let me tell you guys something. Growing up snook fishing and being a land-based angler fishing Sebastian for redfish, stripers are something that I've always wanted to get into and the fishery is amazing. And the fact that these fish are just so aggressive, they're eating these huge eels that we're throwing out there and it was just a blast. You're literally in the water, in your waders, and you just have these big 30 pound fish head shaking and it's just like it's so much for so much fun for a land-based angler to experience so if you guys ever have a chance to do it highly recommend striper fishing now we're gonna go ahead and flay this fish up i got a six inch dexter curved fillet knife right here we're gonna start over here by the head tip of the knife and we're just gonna outline our fish and these fish are super scaly and got really thick scales Look at how beautifully this knife just slides down the fish. So we're just making that initial outline all the way down to the tail. And I'm also going to go up here into the head, follow that head meat right around here, all the way down to its anal fin over there. Oh, I can tell you some, something. This is going to be some good stuff. It looks very similar to what we in Florida catch, which is called snook. If you guys look, that's some real white, white meat. It looks gorgeous. Never flayed a striper, but it seems to be going pretty good. Just gonna go over the ribs right there. On the other side of the backbone, point our fillet knife down. We're working on the tail section. Look at that, that is some good looking stuff. Finish up over these ribs. And these fish got pretty big ribs. And there we go. We got our striper fillet. Not bad, not bad at all. You guys can listen to this. It's all bone. I'm gonna switch over knives because um, I like a little bit of a longer knife for the skinning process. Starting over here by the tail, we're just going to work down the length of the fish. They look like they got some thick skin. I don't know, all you striper guys, go ahead and comment below if the uh, skin is tasty because I've never, like I said, I've never filleted a striper, never eaten one before, but I'm super excited. All right. There is the skin, no meat left on there. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in our bucket. We're gonna check for the pin bones. I feel some right there. So we're going this side and on this side, which runs directly along the back, the uh, bloodline. Cut that out. There's the pin bones and there we have it. You guys have no idea, I feel like a kid walking into a candy shop for the first time with all these Northeast videos, the oysters, the, the clamming, the toe tog, everything we've done has just been like the first of everything. And catching a striper, now I'm going, going to be able to eat it, it's just, I just love it. So I will meet you guys back in the kitchen. And if you guys are interested in any of the knives I use today, these are all Dexter's. You guys can save 20% on all Dexter products at DexterOutdoors.com if you guys use my code Landshark. And all of these videos, this whole series wouldn't be possible without them because they're the ones who flew us up, invited us to do everything, and it has been unbelievable. And I'm so happy I can share with you guys the Northeast fishery and all it has to offer. So let's get to cooking. Brick and I took some fish from New England home. And this is striper that I cut up into these long pieces. And look at how white that is. And this is the toe tog. 
We also caught this fish and everybody says that this is the best fish in New England. Now, I've only eaten it once and I'll say it was good. I think it was slightly overhyped, but it's kind of funny to see that the striper, which is I think considered a lower class fish, is a lot whiter than the totog. Both very firm. So what we're doing today, my favorite dish at P.F. Chang's, if you guys have ever been there, it's this Chinese restaurant, it's a, it's a big chain, is Chang's Spicy Chicken. And I always have loved this dish. I've never tried to recreate it, so I did a little quick Google search and try to get a basic idea of how to make it. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take my fish, and I have a mixture of cornstarch and flour, equal parts with salt and garlic powder for seasoning. We're gonna go ahead and just toss our fish. I'm just gonna put it all in. And I don't want it to be too thick of a coating on the fish, kinda of just lightly coat them. Then we're gonna pan fry them, and then all the ingredients you guys see on this island here, we're gonna make the Chang's spicy sauce. You got scallions, garlic, sesame oil, soy sauce, sugar, pineapple juice, um, some cornstarch to thicken it up, uh, all good stuff. Chili sauce, it's gonna be a really fragrant, sweet, tangy sauce, and I'm so excited. So that's what our little pieces of fish look like. I have our frying pan heating up over there with some canola oil. I'm lightly pan frying the fish, which is coated in that flour cornstarch mixture, so it's getting slightly golden brown. They come out like this, so they're crispy and they're pretty bland. They just have really the salt and the garlic powder flavor, but just wait till you see this sauce. If it's anything like I get at the restaurant, it is going to be so good. Now we're going to work on our sauce. So we're starting with scallion. Bunch of fresh scallion. And that's canola oil in there. And garlic. We're not going to cook this very long, about two minutes. So we woke up the scallion and the garlic. Pineapple juice. Now we have chili sauce, garlic chili sauce, sugar, soy sauce, and vinegar. Okay, we're going to bring this to a boil and then I'm going to reduce the heat and then later on we're going to thicken it up with some cornstarch mixed with our chicken stock. All right guys, so I added the cornstarch with the chicken stock and look at how thick and gooey that is. I also added some sesame oil. I already tried it, it is so good. Now we're gonna add our fish pieces back into here, warm them up through slightly and also coat them. Oh, it's good. All right, it's real good. Okay, so Brooke has her clam linguine, which looks and smells so good. And then here is my striper toe tog in that spicy sauce. Everyone's gonna get a little bit of bowl. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Does it? Does it? I think so. It looks, it looks like chicken, and it, you can honestly convince it somebody it is. It tastes like chicken. But it's, it's really good. Well, two nights in a row, having seafood dinner at Brook and Vic's uh, has been fantastic. They've cooked me almost every species of Florida seafood that we can catch. And now I got lucky enough, they brought us home some uh, New England fare. And it was, it was delicious. Everything they cooked for the last two days has been delicious. Well, I think I always say this about Victor, but he always tries new recipes. Like I always say, fish is something that people think you can only cook a few ways. And Victor likes to think out of the box and try new things. For instance, one of his favorite dishes is a chicken dish and he tried it with fish. And honestly, a lot of us thought it actually tasted like chicken. Like if you were to have sat down at this table and just sat down for a regular meal, not knowing that we were cooking you fish, you would have thought it was chicken. It was amazing. The sauce was perfect. The fish was cooked really good. I'm not saying that, oh, it tasted like chicken, which made it taste better, but that's what I would compare it to. It was really, really good. So good job, Vic, thinking up a new recipe. Thank you, babe. <laughs> Big thank you to Candace, right over there. 
and Jed. Jed is Brooke's brother, for those of you who don't know by now. They actually brought over a homemade Caesar salad with real anchovies in it, which was so good. So thank you guys. You're Maybe welcome. we'll make it for the next video and we'll we'll do a catch and cook. <laughs> yeah, we can do a feature, special feature. <laughs> it was really, really good. Thumbs up if you guys want to see that. Now, first time ever having striper and I loved it. Uh, kind of like the general consensus around the table was it tasted like chicken, which it's stupid to say because fish is fish, steak is steak, chicken is chicken. You shouldn't compare the two, but it, I don't know if it was the texture, but it was so good. What do you guys think? It was delicious. It was great. It was very good. It was incredible. <laughs> Your taste buds are just playing a trick on you. Yeah. It, it tasted like that sauce from chicken, yeah. so it really didn't taste like chicken, but that sauce just it reminded tricked, yeah, you right. of it. It tricked your mind. Yeah. But it's a good meal to feed kids who won't eat fish. There yeah, we go. That's true. And don't forget, guys, Brooke's video will also be linked in the description box below if she has edited it, because Brooke takes a little bit longer to edit videos. <laughs> and uh, that's all the time I got for you guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Well, if Victor's gonna diss me, I'll diss him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that you guys can go back and check, but I'm pretty sure that every single time Victor makes a new fish recipe, he says, that was my favorite fish recipe. <laughs> every single time, I'm pretty sure he says that. I don't know if it's because he just gets better and better, or he just forgets about all the other recipes, <laughs> but they're all so, so good, and I'm pretty sure you're constantly saying that they're your favorite <laughs> recipe. <laughs> They are, Guilty as charged. They are all so, so good. <laughs> Definitely.